guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2023 Chevy Tahoe Premier. And huge thanks to Raul and the rest of the management and staff here at Furman Chevy in Brandon, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have an impressive dealership. I'll leave links to their inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Raul. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Tahoe took over the K5 Blazer as Chevrolet's full-size SUV back in 1994 sharing a platform with the GMC Yukon, which was actually released a few years prior back in 1991 for their first generation. The fifth generation Tahoe that you see here was released in 2021, not only featuring an all new interior and exterior, also featuring for the first time ever a fully independent multi-link rear suspension and a 10 speed hydromatic transmission. For 2023, we do have a couple of updates for the paint colors. We have an all new silver sage metallic, sterling gray metallic, as well as the radiant red tint coat that you see here, basically replacing the cherry red metallic, very similar overall paint color, still very beautiful. Also for 2023, we have an optional black grill. We don't have it here, of course, we just get the old school bow tie, but with the black grill, it has Chevrolet lettering instead of the bow tie. Also for the top trims, Premier and High Country. Also, we don't have this feature here, but they can be optioned with the all new hands-free Super Cruise, which is a really impressive feature. All Tahoe trims have an optional $3,000 four-wheel drive, starting with the LS, after destination starting at $54,595, coming standard with a 5.3 liter V8, cranking out 355 horsepower, 383 pound-feet of torque. Enough to get the SUV to 60 in the low seven second range. For a thousand bucks, you can also option in a three liter Duramax diesel, which makes a little bit less horsepower at 277, but much healthier torque number at 460. If you want a few more luxury features, you can option up to the LT, which starts at $60,000 with the five Point three again an additional thousand dollars for the three liter duramax the rst now that's the trim level most people will probably be going with starting at sixty three thousand five hundred and ninety five for the five point three an extra thousand bucks for the three liter diesel and an extra four thousand dollars for the optional six point two liter v8 which is a powerhouse making 420 horsepower 460 pound feet of torque not the best fuel economy of course but you can do zero to 60 around six seconds if not quicker the z71 is the more aggressive off-road oriented Tahoe starting at $65,595 with the 5.3 of course. If you want the 6.2 it'll cost you an additional $8,700. Not quite sure why it would be so expensive but that's the cost for the 6.2 on the Z71. The Premier that you see here starts at $68,000 after destination but we have standard Magna Ride, limited slip differential, LED lighting, three zone climate control, heated and ventilated seats, wireless charging pad and it is loaded with safety features. For $1,000, of course, you can go with the three liter Duramax, $2,500 for the 6.2. The top of the line Tahoe is the high country starting at 73,695 bucks, coming standard with a three liter Duramax diesel with an optional $1,500 6.2. But again, this is the premier after destination starting around 68,000 bucks. What do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your all new updated front grille. It's just a chrome grill it's not too overly shiny though it kind of has an aluminum look to it bow tie up front with a forward facing camera beneath full front parking sensing additional chrome beneath that functional airflow in both corners full led for the headlights and daytime running strips we can take a squat back here hopefully you guys can pick up the airflow for the grill pretty aggressive hood too i kind of like how we have those triangle shapes which highlight the bulge in the center wheel and tire setup we have these two thousand dollar optional 22 inch trims personally i think these are a little bit plain for the two thousand dollars but they're still 22s six piece lug pattern wrapped in bridgestone alenza all season tires dimensions being a square 275 55 R22 tire setup Tahoe right next to it, no plastic cladding, no side sensor either for the parking sensor, but we do get a 360. It's helped because we do have cameras on the mirror, LED turn signal two on the mirror, some smoked-ish shiny chrome. It's pretty reflective, but it's not quite as shiny as some other vehicles we've reviewed on this channel. Smart access for all four power running boards. We had a little bit of shiny chrome for the lower portion of the window trim with some black trim up top, blacked out B and half of your C pillar. We have an aluminized, Roof rail up top, not shiny chrome. Same rear wheel and tire setup. The gas cap is pushed to open. We'll open it up right now. You can throw 87 octane fuel into this 5.3 liter Ecotec V8. LED taillights and brake lights, but the turn signals and reverse lights are just a halogen 
quad exhaust tips. These are very aggressive for the Premier Tahoe in the center, Chevrolet bow tie with some chrome surrounding it. All right, guys, one thing I want to show you on this 2023 Tahoe for the key fob, of course, we get remote start, two trunk opening buttons. So you might be wondering why are there two? You double click this bottom button and the glass actually opens up. So not a lot of SUVs do this anymore. The Toyota 4Runner I know does this. The um, Ford Expedition has an available version of this, but the Tahoe here for the Premier, it comes standard. So if you've got kayaks, you can just dump them into your SUV. You're not gonna have to worry about tying anything down. If you have pets back here, you can simply drop your grocery bags with no issues too. Very convenient feature. Nice to see Chevrolet still has that as an available option. Again, shout out Firm and Chevy for making this review possible. Premier badge in the corner, full rear parking sensing. We have a trailer hitch. I'll leave a link right here to show you what this Tahoe is rated to tow. I'll take a squat back here. You can get a good look at your fully independent rear suspension, quad exhaust tips, but let's fire up this 5.3 liter V8 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 5.3 liter Ecotec V8 sold by Chevrolet for the 2023 Tahoe Premier. And it sounds pretty decent. Unfortunately, we only have like a 24, 2500 RPM rev limiter, but it makes a decent amount of power, 355 horsepower, 383 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this 5,500 pound SUV to 60 in the low seven second range. So certainly not the quickest, but as you see, we do get some supports for the, not strut towers, but some supports for the chassis. So the handling compared to vehicles like the Expedition and other full-size SUVs is far ahead of the competition. And with this Magna Ride suspension, the ride quality is still excellent. But we can shut this thing right up. Again, thumbs up for the struts. Those are appreciated. We can get one last look at this front end styling. This beautiful red metallic. Hopefully you can pick it up. Not the sunniest day right now, but hopefully at some point in this review, the sun comes out and we can get a good look at that metallic but the interior that's where this suv really shines this is the near top trim premiere we get beautiful tan leather for the top portion wood trim beneath that aluminum above it aluminum surrounding your aluminum door handle lock and unlock auto one touch up front power folding mirrors four-way adjustable two-person memory seats nice solid storage gushy soft for the armrest perforated leather two-tier storage just hard plastic but to be expected very solid amount of space you'll easily fit a couple foot longs 20 ounce water bottle bose 10 speaker sound system it sounds very good chevrolet nameplate as we step inside power running boards as we mentioned the seats are also very comfortable heated and ventilated decently supportive fully adjustable they should be fully adjustable we would get four-way lumbar control typically on the premier but because of the shortages it's something that will be retrofitted by the dealer after your first or second service visit but you can recline drop lift and slide the seats the interior itself we'll take a step inside and really check it out so engine start stop button to the right of the steering wheel you can see everything fire right to life cool we get the camera mirror too that's an option i'll show you guys the window sticker right here um, i'll also turn the air down by a couple so you can hear a little better unfortunately this is just a demo car so there is no window sticker but i did get a screenshot from the dealership website and hopefully you can get a good pause uh, first thing we notice in this interior is just how premium it looks we have leather trim literally just about everywhere soft touch perforated leather for the entire dashboard area stitching where you couldn't even imagine entire dashboard of course is leather stitched we got the all-new 10.25 inch touchscreen unbelievable response we have a camera mirror and we have the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. But we'll start off with the steering wheel. It's similar to what we would get from the Silverado. The steering feel, however, is excellent. The GM steering feels have been some of the best in the segment. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our cruise control settings, heated steering wheel, forward collision alert, six o'clock spoke on the right side, voice commands. You can answer and hang up your phone calls. And this adjusts your infotainment dial. So right now we're looking at radio, media, AM, FM, Sirius, Bluetooth, USB, Google News and podcasts. You can see a heads up turn by turn and compass. If the navigation isn't hooked up, we can connect our phone, adjust our display layout. We can change our left side info, right side info, lower gauges, info pages, unit speed warning, uh, speed sign display, heads up display, software info, and we can re return to the default factory settings at all times. The display layout, we can adjust between progressive, classic, which changes things up a little bit, cool, digital it takes a second to change up i'm not the biggest fan of digital there's also clean which i don't believe i will also like 
Yeah, very simple display. My personal favorite would be either classic or progressive. We'll start off in classic. If I don't like it, I'll change it to progressive. We get a digital speedo right up top. The speedometer goes to about 140 and the TAC goes to about 5,800 RPM. Coolant temperature range and fuel level. Down below to the left of the steering wheel, more wood trim. Electronic parking brake, lane keep assist. Parking assist, you can turn off. Auto start stop, you can also turn off. 360 camera, you can access at all times or just cameras in general. Traction control, you can disable. Heads up display, and as you see, it is an impressive display, 15 inches. And you can adjust the um, display itself with that info dial. So right now we're looking at a digital speedo, traffic sign recognition, you can change up into your turn by turn, or you can have a digital speedo with the traffic sign recognition only. My personal favorite would be the active lane keep assist, digital speedo, and traffic sign recognition down below. Next to so it, you can adjust the brightness for the heads-up display, interior brightness, auto headlamps. Uh, to the left, we have our drive mode selector. The drive modes include tow haul mode, snow ice, sport, and normal. We'll start the review off a normal transition to sport to see what the differences are. We get a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. That's a nice feature. You can get a good look at your pedals and your hood latch release too. Satisfying click for the turn signals, auto rain sensing wipers, also an appreci appreciated feature. This 10 speaker Bose system sounds excellent. If you guys haven't noticed yet, the camera mirror also available as an option. This display though, we haven't gotten the chance to really check it out. The response is excellent. So is the resolution. It's a Google Maps display. You can see your active trailer mode as soon as it loads up. Trailer light test and you can start the light test beneath that. You can connect your phone for Bluetooth. Down below we have our screen again, music. Once it loads up, you can see AM, FM, Sirius, Bluetooth, Podcast, Google News, and USB, and our overall home screen. See everything that's available here. Cool. Cameras, though, I mentioned that we have the button for the 360. We press that 360 button, and now we're looking at a 360 camera and a forward-facing camera. You can turn off your 360 to the right if you don't want to see it for some reason. You can adjust between a forward or rear-facing camera with a trailer hitch liner upper, so you can connect your hitch to the receiver. We also have an over-the-top rear view, over-the-top front view, blind spot view, so you don't have to worry about scratching up your wheels if you park close to a curb, and a true trailer hitch view as well. We can turn on and off that trailer hitch view if you don't want to see it for some reason. Same with the 360, but we can close out of here, return to the map. That's probably my favorite screen to just look at at all times. You throw it into reverse. Of course, we go right back to our 360 and rear view camera. Now we get guidance lines and trajectory. Nice and appreciative feature. We don't get paddle shifters, but we do have manual shift modes, I guess, if that's what you want to call them next to your low gear. Throw it back into park. We return. We do not return to our home screen. You have to actually press the X button to return. Air vents beneath the media controls have hard buttons, which is a thumbs up for me. You don't have to worry about dealing with everything through the touchscreen. Hard buttons for the climate control, hard buttons for the heated and ventilated seats. You can turn off your rear climate by a click of a button too. That's also nice. USB, USB-C port, wireless charging pad, and a 12 volt. Once I figure out how to open it, there you go. 12 volt. Behind that, two cup holders, pretty large too once I get this lightning charger, whatever you want to call it, out of the way. The cup holders are large. I'd expect you to fit 16, maybe 20 ounce water bottles. Pass through, good spot for a phone. Super gushy, soft, perforated and non-perforated tan leather armrest with a nice spot for a phone in the center of the space. Again, this is a demo car, so there is some stuff in here, but massive storage. You're fitting a 12 pack of 20 ounce cans in there with no issues. Glove box, before you can go to the glove box, more of that perforated leather with wood trim above it. Hard plastic, outside the glove box to be expected, but it's damped and it is large. You're fitting 30 license plates. You should be able to fit two pairs of shoes with no issues. We get a panoramic moonroof too, three garage home link settings. The interior light is LED. We can adjust how high our tailgate opens too. So if you are shorter and you don't want to have to reach really high up for the button for the tailgate, you can set it to three quarters so it's not as difficult. You can fold the rear seats down with a click of a button. You can turn off the zone lights. This, vehicle, this SUV does get zone lighting for the exterior. You can open up the shade. You can tilt the sunroof or slide the glass completely open. We can start off with the shade. See how quickly it takes for the shade to open. Not too slow a process and the glass looks decently large. Once the glass or the shade opens, we'll slide the moonroof open. See how far it goes out. Wow, it goes out all the way out. I've actually never seen a moonroof flushly end up with the second panel of glass. So massive opening, we'll poke our way out of here. Beautiful day, it might not be beautiful for so long here, but in the meantime, it is sunny and according to this Tahoe Premier 93, 
degrees. But we can shut this moonroof up. We'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back and see how much light is brought into the cabin. But other than that, that's about it for the front seat of this 2023 Tahoe Premier. I'll leave a link to the window sticker one more time. You guys can pause, take a quick look, but that's about it. We'll hop out back. Again, the running boards make it pretty easy getting in and out of this absolute behemoth of an SUV. Out rear, up top, same materials. We get the tan baseball glove, leather stitch trim, beautiful interior, wood trim beneath that aluminum, surrounding the aluminum door handle lock and unlock aluminum above the wood. Gushy soft for the armrest, no power one touch, no dual panes either for the rear or the front. So single pane windows, but it's still a very quiet interior. We'll check that out once we take it out for a drive. Two tiers of storage. You'll fit a couple footlongs. You'll fit some snacks right above Bose speaker. Running boards continue Chevrolet nameplate. The seats, they don't have any bolstering at all, but they're pretty soft. Captain's chairs, the armrest is pretty wide. We'll unbutton this seat belt. You can recline the seats, you can double lift to completely fold them down flat too. We'll check out the third row in one second, but in the meantime, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have a ton of space, almost as spacious as a Silverado back here, and we have a third row. Map pockets behind both the front seats, third zone climate. Unfortunately, we don't have the 12 inch screens that would be available and it's not a retrofitted option, but again, there are available 12 inch screens for the later models. Two cup holders with a pass through. If we didn't show you guys how wide this armrest is, pretty wide, I can easily fit my arm with no complaints. Headroom, I have at least two, three inches from my head will start to touch. The air vents blow directly into your face. Excellent location, LED, Lighting, ton of light brought into the cabin. Well, it's a pretty cloudy day right now. It might pour rain pretty soon, but if it was sunny, a ton of light would be brought into the cabin thanks to this absolutely massive moonroof. We'll hop out into the third row. We have a grab handle, which makes it easier to get in and out for older or smaller passengers. So you simply lift this latch two times. The second it falls, you can lift this second latch and it allows you very easy access into the third row. We have three full seats back here and a lot of headroom, so I'm not even worried about it crushing my head against the ceiling. Put this seat right back where it was. I got a ton of space back here, easily two, three inches of legroom, hard plastic, unfortunately, but we still get a USB-C port, cup holder, some areas for snacks, air vent, which blows directly into your face, LED light, get one last look through your moonroof. Headroom, I have at least two, three inches, so definitely capable for full-size adults. You can press this button right here, and the seat simply falls right down, so very convenient. We can lift this latch and the seat falls right away. Super simple getting in and out of the third row of the Tahoe Premier. Throw the second row seat right back. Hopefully you guys saw in the beginning how the rear windshield pops up. We have an LED third brake light, but underneath this little pocket we have a button which electrically opens up our tailgate. And as you see, the third row's up, we still have a decent amount of space, not as much as a Suburban, of course. A Suburban will give you like an additional foot, almost two feet of cargo space with the front row or the third row's up. So if you need cargo space with three rows, definitely go Suburban. If you're just gonna be using your third rows for occasions, then I guess the Tahoe's more than enough. We get some secret storage down here too. We can check it out. You can remove this tray, you get, you'll get an additional foot or so of storage. The, third rows you can fold them down electrically same with the second rows to do the third rows you simply just press this button and they fall down quickly unfortunately the second row seat is in the way if you fold those second row seats down i don't think they make tvs big enough for them not to fit back here you'll fit two kayaks back here with no issues whatsoever huge opening we can shut this tailgate up with a click of a button as we saw next to the buttons for the sunroof you can have it set where that the tailgate only goes three quarters of the way up. I'm liking those exhaust tips. Hopefully you can pick up that rumble from that 5.3 liter Ecotec V8. We'll take one more quick little walk around of this 2023 Tahoe Premier. It is a beautiful SUV. When it comes to luxury and features, you get basically the same as you would get from an Escalade. But that's about it for the inside and outside of this 2023 Tahoe Premier. Let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2023 Chevy Tahoe Premier, let's take it out for a drive. And the first thing I notice is you see that? You get a forward facing camera with guidance lines and trajectory and a 360. As soon as you put it into drive, that is cool. So you don't even have to look at the, at the front windshield while driving this car. It's gonna turn off once you hit like 10 miles an hour, but under 10 miles an hour, you can do all your driving while just looking at the screen. But taking a step out here, about quarter throttle. Yeah, it feels strong. Down low at least, it feels very strong down low. Throwing it in, 
Yeah, the steering feels good for a full-size truck, about half throttle. Yeah, feels pretty good. It's not blowing you away. Obviously, like the Ford Expedition makes a lot more power. Um, if you wanna have comparable power to an Expedition, you'll have to option up to a 6.2, but this 5.3, it gets pretty decent gas mileage, about 17 combined, 15 city, 20 on the highway. The throttle response is good. You get that V8 punch with the gas pedal, and I personally love that. Obviously, the EcoBoost, once the um, turbos spool up, it makes more power, but you do have to wait for the turbos to spool up. With this 5.3 liter V8, you step on the gas and you are going. The brake pedal bite feels great. The mirrors, if we didn't mention, the glass is, the glass is huge. We have blind spot monitoring on the glass. Try out this handling a little bit more. Bumps. You don't really feel any bumps with this Magnaride massive yeah, very soft ride quality especially with this all new multi-link rear independent rear suspension throwing it in way quicker than we should Ooh, it's a, it's actually crazy how flat it is the handling is miles ahead of the expedition massive bumps wow ride quality is great here all right but this should be a good opportunity right here to try an acceleration out off the line we got a pretty much empty road throw it in we'll leave it in um normal mode normal mode on the gas yeah okay pulls pretty well it's not blowing your way in terms of speed the 6.2 makes a lot more power but okay throwing it in one more time the handling is great yeah, it feels good. And with this mechanical limited slip differential off the line, you're not getting any wheel spin. So going four by four, not necessarily necessary. Obviously, if you live in a snowy climate, go four by four, it'll save you in the long term. But if you're in like Florida, there's absolutely no reason to have to go with the four by four. We'll try it out one time in sport mode. See the differences are throttles more sensitive. Steering feels about the same. Not a whole lot of difference with the steering. Suspension feels about the same. Yeah, so sport mode doesn't really change anything up. Wouldn't be expected with a vehicle like this. Anyway, it's not a sports car, but as soon as we get a chance to step out of this multiple lane highway, we can open her up a little bit more and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right, taking a step out onto this highway once we're situated on the gas. Definitely gets up and goes, but if you notice in the heads up display, it shows us how far away seconds wise we are to the car in front of us. So this cruise control, even though we don't get the smart cruise is a very advanced system. We'll turn around right here, cut across this entire highway. <laughs> a little reckless, but nobody was there. We'll try out a real world U-turn. See how this Tahoe's turning radius is. Okay, wow, it is really sharp. Oh my gosh, on the gas. Yup, definitely gets there. And cruising along at highway speeds, in sport mode, we do hold our revs. We're at about 2000 RPM. Rolling star, about half throttle. Yeah, very responsive shifts, very responsive shifts. We'll throw it back into normal mode. Yeah, the transmission immediately downshifts us into overdrive. The throttle is a lot less sensitive. The transmission's a lot less eager to downshift. But it's nice. You don't really hear a lot of road noise. The wind noise, you hear a little bit. We just get single pane windows, unfortunately, with this Tahoe. So for the $70,000 price point, I would expect dual pane windows, but it's still very quiet. It's a, it's a thick single panel of glass. All right, one more time, real world turning radius. As you see, very impressive on the gas. I couldn't figure out where to go but as you see it picks up speed very well obviously the full throttle acceleration we said it countless times it's good it won't blow you away but it's that low throttle when you're just getting onto the gas pedal the instant response that you get with this 5.3 liter v8 it's not something you can get with a turbocharged engine and we're at the point now where full-size suvs like this more often than not 
will come equipped with a turbocharged engine, whether it's an EcoBoost, the new Toyota engines. Um, so if you're looking for a V8, yes, there's the new Nissan Armadas. Those are still using a V8. But I personally prefer the way that the Tahoe handles, drives, and the interior is significantly more spacious. So if you're looking for a full-size truck, you want a value-packed luxury truck. You don't want to go with an Escalade. You don't want to go with an Infiniti QX. Um, 80, you don't want to necessarily go with the Lexus LX either. This is a great way to go. Yes, it's still about $70,000, a little bit more than $70,000, but you are getting a lot, a lot for the money. The luxury is there. The performance, it's not blowing you away, but it's still there. Good performing SUV for the money. If you're looking for a full-size SUV, three-row SUV, you need the space, you want the luxury, the Tahoe Premier is a great way to go. And a huge thanks to Raul and the rest of the management and staff here at Furman Chevy in Brandon, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Raul. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.